Three Bays Campsite is the first one you come to as you head north on the Burrabagata Peninsula. There is some area behind the beach where you can park up, but the beach is reasonably okay to drive on for four-wheel drives, and there are a number of sites scattered in the bush just behind the beach further up. High tide mark on the beach indicates that at some times the water level rises quite substantially so you'll need to check your tides and make sure that you can access the beach during the time you want to stay. The next campsite you'll come to heading north is Three Bays North. It's a small secluded beach with a rocky ledge. It's possible to launch a boat from here but there are some rocks to get over. Unlike most other campsites, Three Bays North is a single booking site which basically means up to 10 people can stay but they all have to be listed on the same booking. Just over the ridge from Three Bays North, you'll come to Shell Beach. This is a wide sandy beach with some areas behind it that are suitable for camping. This is a very popular site for caravanners and is a shared beach, so you will find quite a few people parked up here during peak season. Originally, there was a long drop toilet available at this site, but while we were there, it was closed and it's probably going to stay closed as there is now a dump point available as you enter the peninsula. Although boat launching from the beach is very simple, there is also a boat ramp available just behind the hill with the cairn on it. Have a look for the track leading to the right just as you enter Shell Beach. Well, we're actually due to leave Tamerlan tomorrow morning and uh, first time I came down and had a look at a little track that comes down off the lookout just behind Shell Beach. Uh, this is every bit as good as a boat ramp. <laughs> it's amazing. There's a little track coming down from the car park up the top there. This is almost like concrete. I don't know if this is actually a rock or somebody put this in. 
but uh, look at that. This would be an absolutely excellent spot to launch a boat, I would think. Not that we've had much luck finding fish out there, but uh, <laughs> this is amazing. I really did not know this was here. I've parked up the top to get the internet a couple of times. Uh, this little lookout area at the top here. Uh, you can see the pole that's leaning on my car. Uh, that uh, is what we use. We stick the internet box on top, the Telstra box on top of that. Put it right up in the air and we get internet. But I only briefly looked down here from the top. Never really came down to have a look at it. And I'm quite astounded by what I can see. It almost looks like this is concrete that someone's put in here. I can't imagine anybody bringing a whole pile of concrete out here, but I've uh, got to tell you, that's what it looks like. Nana's campsite was the last on the eastern side of the peninsula that we managed to visit. Unfortunately the weather wasn't cooperating with our filming schedule and we lost four whole days. The track up to Nana's was fairly corrugated. Vehicles should already have dropped their tyre pressures when coming onto the unsealed section of Useless Loop Road. So as long as you do that the ride won't be too rough for you. The northern section of Nana's campsite is a wide sandy beach, while the southern section leads to a rocky ledge. This is Tea Tree East. Easy access and nice long sandy beach. Good for boat launching and behind the bushes a little bit of shelter if you need to get out of the wind at some stage so pretty good for that. Quite a bit of rock here, but uh, once you get over that, and it looks like it's possible, because we've got somebody who has managed to launch here, and once you pass the rock, beautiful sandy area, a little bit of rock down here, but uh, not much to worry about. What? It would certainly make launching a bit easier than three bays north once you've got the boat down onto the beach. And you really only have to do that once per trip. A different area up here. I can't see any islands close by. 
but I think for most of these places you have to have a reasonable sized dinghy with a 15 horse or bigger engine on it to get you out to where the fishing spots are quickly. We found that the little car park near the boat ramp just before you enter Shell Beach was an ideal spot for getting the internet when we needed it. To do so we needed a couple of tent poles which we tied together with some oki straps. We put our Telstra box on top of that, just connecting it with elastic bands, turned it on and then put the pole up as high as we could get it. Each time we tried this we did get the internet reliably, which was pretty handy for staying in contact and generally checking emails, etc. Normal phone signal, on the other hand, was pretty dodgy and came and went at different times of the day. <laughs> 